We can think of a compute shader as lots of cells running the same code. And we can think of it as sort of like a grid of cells. For example, if we were calling dispatch, we might create a grid of 16 cells. If, if we were calling 1611 because it's 16 by 1 by 1. If we had a grid of 16 by 16, we might have 256 cells. Or we could have a three-dimensional grid of 4096 cells if we had 16 by 16 by 16. And keep in mind, these, these numbers are totally arbitrary. Like we could have a one-dimensional grid of 4096 cells as well. So we can think of sort of a compute shader as a grid of cells or as a grid of little computers, where in this example, it's a one-dimensional 16-cell computer. Here we have a two-dimensional 256-cell cell computer or a three-dimensional 4096-cell computer. And so we can think of each of these cells as a little computer that's going to try to do run algorithms. What can each cell do? Like say that say that you're this this cell here, the the green one. And as this cell you want to do some computing and you'd like to use this array of integers. You want to do some computing with that array of integers as this cell. And someone wants each element in this array to be incremented by five. So if it's two, then they want it to be seven. And you and the other cells all agree that each of you will add five to the index of the array that corresponds to the index of your cell. So you're this cell. So you're like, all right, well, this is my index in the array. I'm going to take the two here, and I'm going to add five to it, and then put seven back into this array. And of course, since you all agreed to it, all the other cells while you were doing that have done their part as well. And so the array has been updated. So let's look a little bit more at this, that, that step above where I said you agree with the other cells that you'll each, you will each add five elements, five to the L index of the array corresponding to the index of your cell. And the question is, how do you, in this visual image, it's kind of obvious, but as a cell, how do you know what your index is? As you'll see in the next video, when we write compute shader kernels, we end up having this argument of uint3 id. And then each of the code for the cells would be here. So the id is sort of like an index to the cell. Let me show you how that works. If we were this cell, then if we were looking at our id in this code, then it would be 1200. If we were this cell, our ID would be 12, 12, 0. Or if we were one of these cells in our 3D grid computer system, then we might be 12, 12, 3 or something. And so let's look at a slightly more complex example of what cells can do now that we have this understanding of a cell and an ID. Let's say that you're a cell in this two-dimensional computer shader system where each cell is a little computer. And you want to do some computing with an array of integers, like perhaps the same array that we had before, in this texture of pixels. So these are each a color, a uh, float 4 or something. You want to make the texture pixel color corresponding to your x, y index red if the array index corresponding to your x index is 9. So for example, if you were this cell, and you might look at this number here because that's the array index corresponding to your x index, and then you might set this one to be red if this were 9 because this is the texture index corresponding to your cell's xy index. So here I just have some lines pointing to show that. If you're this cell, you'd read from the array at your x, id.x and then write to the texture at your id.xy. And as you've done that, of course, all the other cells have done the same thing. So what does is, what is this red cell algorithm look like in code? On the C-sharp side on the left, this is sort of not complete, but it's I think it's helpful to look at. We have int kernel equals compute dot find kernel main kernel and then compute dot set texture kernel texture texture. And so this texture here is the name of our variable 
here in our compute shader. And this buffer here is also the name of our variable here. And then these, of course, we would need to define, but I'm ignoring that here. And then we call compute.dispatch kernel 16161. And we can think of this dispatch call, like we saw earlier, as launching a grid of 16 by 16 by 1. Sort of like this up here. It's sort of a two-dimensional 256 cell computer. So we've we've called this batch and launched that computer, that, that grid of computers. And then in our shader, we might have something like RW texture 2D float for texture, RW structured buffer int buffer. So here we're just saying that this is a read-write texture 2D, which is corresponds to something like this. And then that this is a read-write array type structure that is our int buffer corresponding to this. And then here is our kernel, which whose name corresponds to the kernel that we found over here. And we might say if buffer id.x equals equals 9, then texture id.xy equals float for 1001 for red. And so here is our cell index, and then here is our code for each cell. And so this, of course, directly corresponds to the algorithm that we were running here, where you read from the array at your id.x, buffer id.x equals, equals 9, and then write to your texture at id.xy. And again, this is, this is more, you can think of this more or less as pseudocode. So we can summarize this by saying that cells use their id plus data buffers, plus constants to run computations. And we send data as array buffers or textures generally. And what kinds of data can we use? We've, we've kind of already seen it in that we can have these buffers, like we could send an array of integers or an array of float2. For example, let's say you had a 2D simulation where there were some little cells wandering around. You might send their positions. You could send an array of structs. So if you have some sort of C type structure, then you can send that. Like you could make up your own little animal structure that had a position and a velocity and have all of those go in together in an array. And then of course you can have two and 3D textures. That's about it for now. Have a look at the next video where we actually implement a compute shader